From time to time, all of us are capable of getting it very, very wrong, like this guy. And as far as defeats go, that's just about as bad as it can get. But there will be no excuses, no ghosts of 54, no curse of the Maracanã. This was one of the worst sporting defeats in history. At 3-0, you could sense something truly terrible was about to happen. The Brazil players, rather than battening down the hatches, could just see the headlines. And they were personified by their errant captain, totally directionless. And as for the Germans, well, they were wonderfully German. So much to talk about. Let us know your take on the game in the comments below. And in the meantime, here are the five things that we learned. Beware false prophets. Brazil were clearly distracted by the absence of Neymar. Nearly all of their pre-match focus was on the missing talisman. Histrionics that could have led some to believe that something altogether more gruesome had happened. But as much as we hear about the skill and flair players from the past, the great Brazil teams were built from a robust core with uncompromising defenders like Ramos, Alder, Branco, Hildorado Bellini, Domingo Astaguia, Luis Pereira. So in fact, rather than Neymar, it was probably the absence of Thiago Silva, Brazil's strongest defender for a number of years, that hurt them the most in the end. No record is safe. Every player heads into the World Cup with the hopes and dreams of becoming a hero, laying their name into national folklore, inscribing their nomenclature onto the annals of time. Then there's the flip side, a side that any sports psychologist will try and beat away from you with a very heavy imaginary stick. Sadly for Brazil, that imaginary psychologist's imaginary stick just wasn't big enough. It was a night of tearing up records from the moment that Miroslav Klose scored in the 23rd minute. But rather than just rip up the book, the Brazilians decided to subject it to the David Luiz treatment. And that's jumping on it with two feet, elbowing it in the face, and then wandering off, forgetting it ever existed. Brazil equaled their largest ever defeat, previously 6-0 against Uruguay back in 1920, as Germany became the first country ever to score seven goals in the semi-final of a World Cup. Only three teams have gone into the halftime break, losing by five goals or more in World Cup history. Zaire, Haiti, and now Brazil. Germany scored four goals in six minutes. That's the first time that's happened in World Cup history. And the brace from Tony Crows, two goals in 69 seconds, is the fastest ever in the World Cup. David Luiz did a Luiz. Much as Claude Makélélé birthed a moniker, last night, so did David Luiz. From now on, anytime anyone abandons their duties, recklessly flies into challenges, venting their frustrations, tries to rescue some hero status by attempting mazy runs, and then abjectly loses possession, leaving his teammates well and truly in the lurch, they will say, he's done a Luiz. Jose Mourinho must have a grin as wide as, well, Jose Mourinho right about now. Scary Germans. Let nobody focus too much on Brazil's abject performance because this German side really is that good. Anybody asking whether they peaked too early or whether they might be distracted by this victory as they head into the final should be reminded of the manner of this win. Germany had their foot on the throttle, or should that be the throat, for almost 90 minutes, maybe only lifting it in that brief spell after halftime because they were starting to get a crampy foot, so decided to change feet ruthless. It's hard to imagine any other international side that would have had the balls slash collectiveness to inflict such a bloody defeat in a World Cup semi-final in the host backyard, no less. In the end, focus, communication and collectiveness are key. Sure, we all love watching raw ability or breathtaking skill, but by appearing as diametric opposites last night, Brazil and Germany proved beyond doubt that focus, organisation and togetherness are as important as air, water and vitamin D in terms of footballing function. Whilst the Brazil team might have appeared superficially collective before kickoff and even after the final whistle, when they were actually on the pitch, they displayed all the reliability and balance of a mobile phone on a car dashboard. It's hard to avoid German cliches and stereotypes when describing the application of Joachim Love's game plan. The focus, commitment, and realization of a better strategy was catastrophically too much for Brazil in the end. A team overhyped, overpressurized, and under-talented, meeting a German team hitting their stride. So much to talk about. How is this going to affect Germany heading into the final? Have they peaked a little bit too soon? And what about the Brazilian players? Are there any of them that just won't be able to recover from a defeat of this magnitude? And what about the Thiago Silva versus Neymar debate? Which player do you think Brazil ended up missing the most? Let us know your thoughts 
in the comments below. So much to talk about, we wanna hear from you. And if you haven't already, don't forget, you can subscribe to the channel right about here. See you soon.